Hello, hello. I have arrived. Artist, archivist, VTuber, and tonight, theoretical medical professional. Took me a while to remember that. You can call me Tiberius Vanderfield. Hello, hello. But yes, so, today, more Arc Nights. But yes, probably going to be a little bit short today because I didn't sleep super well, uh, I didn't sleep super well, like, two nights ago, and I didn't sleep, I didn't get any extra sleep to catch up, uh, this last night. I'm a little bit tired this evening. Not so tired that I would, uh, be unable to stream, I think. I figured I could either be tired and stream, or I could be tired and not stream. And either way, I'd be tired, but at least in one of those situations, I would have streamed. So, I decided that was the preferable option. But yes, so... Oh, right, we do have notable business tonight. So yes, so, on Saturday, currently, we are planning to resume the collab series with Sheppy Sheps. But yes, so I think we are expecting that to begin sometime after 8 p.m. Central, though I can't be quite sure when that will be precisely. But yes, once again, Saturday, look for it around 8, 8 p.m. Central. And yeah, continuing, concluding even, Coffee Talk. And if we have time, maybe moving on to the next game. But yes, that is... I guess that's kind of here or there. This is the time that I talked about that. I was going to say that it was neither here nor there, but it is here and now. Anyway, beyond that, once again, Arc Knights. But yes, I do not have a operator spotlight prepared. Yeah, that was something that slipped my mind. I was a little bit busy earlier this week as well. So yes. Um... Yeah, no operator spotlight, short stream, already went over the schedule. So yeah, I suppose we are good to begin. I always feel... I'm so used to sort of meandering around my points. Whenever I don't spend roughly 10 to 20 minutes stating this information, it always feels like... It always feels like I've forgotten something. But I'm reasonably confident that I didn't, so... Video games. Yes, last time we did... Operation RI4, we got a little hint of what Zumama is planning for the future of Akuhuala, and yeah, we concluded the last mission that I played when I was playing through this, this event uh, casually. The game feels a little bit loud to me, I think that's just on my end, I don't believe... Yeah, nothing looks different on the stream side. But I think I might have just had my volume up a little bit higher than usual. Anyway, R-I-S-T-1. Being straightforward has never meant being reckless. Oof. Ugh, that hurts a little. Gaviel, you're awake. Are you okay? I'm fine, just a scratch. More importantly, is that the machine Zumama's been tinkering with all this time? Yes, I heard they been calling it the big ugly thing. So gross. It's pretty cool, I'd say. So... Huh? But the big thing definitely beat you down. I can tell it's really tough, even though it knocked my highlights out before I got a good look at it. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. But I never imagined she'd actually put so together something like this. Closure makes some weird gadgets every once in a while, yeah. But even she'd be impressed with the Zoomama's machine here. <laughs> Ooh, wow, are there lots of things like that at Rhodes Island? Not that ugly. Uh, it wasn't that ugly. We didn't get a great look at it, mostly a silhouette, but... I liked it. Anyway, there's there's things not dissimilar to it, perhaps. Uh, Roach Island sounds scary. Hmm? What happened to the temple? That monster blew it up. Ah, oh, so that means the ceremony's over? 
Yeah, that's... And so Zumum is the great chief now? Yes. Everyone was pretty shocked at first, but... Why did I destroy the temple? It's simple. It's my way of telling you... Uh, telling you all we're ending this tradition. With your fist, you can beat down ten men. If you're Gaviel, maybe you take down a hundred. But more than that, even Gaviel couldn't manage. There's a limit to what you can do with your fists. But with a tool, that's different. My tribe created this big, ugly thing that effortlessly took down Gaviel and destroyed the temple just as easily. This is the power of a tool. Tools can make you who all even stronger. And so I hereby proclaim the Age of Machines. Everyone bought into it, so... So she became the Great Chief. Huh. Well, that's an L for me, obviously. Are you okay with that? Huh? Yeah, a loss is a loss. Uh, but I do have to apologize to Tomimi. It's my fault you never got a chance to fight. That's okay. Even if I went up there, it wouldn't have changed anything. Yeah, you're right about that one. Hey, Doctor, what do we do now? Well? Sightseeing? <laughs> oh, I love this Doctor. Now let's get some sightseeing in while we look for the engine and the girls. Um, well... Huh? Those two over there. Hey, Yoda, are you okay? Yeah, it's just... It kinda... Yoda! I need a shaman! Hey, let me take a look. Gaviel? You're alive? Takes more than that to kill me. Shut up for now. Lay your brother out and I'll look him over. Mimi, get my medical bag. Uh, oh. Okay. Is he gonna be alright? He's not dead. But he's not looking good either. Shortness of breath, foamy, bloody spittle, and originum, originium crystals on the body. Doctor, my initial diagnosis is heart failure brought on by oropathy. What? It's stone disease. The symptoms aren't too bad. I have some emergency medicine in my bag, but we need to treat him right away. Stand him up. He can't lay down. I'll give him some oxygen. The stone disease did this? I told him not to push it. Hey, what's your name? I'm Yogi. That's my brother, Yoda. Which tribe? Eunectes? What's wrong, Gaviel? Your face is scaring me. Not now. I'm asking again. Did Zubama send you into the mines to get ore for a big metal monster? Yes? Why? <laughs> I'm sorry, Doctor. No matter what, I have to pay Zumama a visit. Because of the stone disease? Nothing gets past you, Doctor. Our tribes don't have much contact with the outside world. You and the other operators are a primitive backwater. But there is one good thing about this place. You heard it, right? They call oropathy stone disease and treat it like an ordinary malady. Sometimes people catch it, sometimes they die of it, but nobody thinks it's anything special because people here die of die from lots of things. Everyone looks after oropathy patients like they're just regular sick people. All they know is about the disease that you can catch it in the mines. So, very few people go oh, into the mines. It's been that way for a long time. So, your oropathy... Gaviel caught it when she saved me. Yeah, when Tamimi was little, she snuck down into the depths of the mines. I went to rescue her, and I got sick. Lucky she didn't. If only I got it instead. Don't you dare say that. Getting sick is a terrible thing. It's just bad luck. Mm. So they really ostracized you out of here? You've asked that a couple of times, Doctor. After I got sick, the other tribes people wouldn't let me do anything. I couldn't hunt. I couldn't even go to a gathering. And the old runt Tomimi here was the worst. 
She came over from her tribe and stuck to me like glue. She did everything for me and I had nothing to do. In the end, they wouldn't even let me join the ceremony. Day after day, time after time, it was, Oh no, Gavio, let me do that for you. You know what I mean? That's no life for me. So, less of a ostracization and more just that she didn't want to be infantilized for her illness. Gavio didn't smile much after that. I was so ticked off, I went to the ceremony anyway and beat the tar out of everyone I saw on the way. <laughs> I shouldn't have been so pushy, Gaviel. That really is a kind of ostracization. Eh, the reality is, around here, if you can't fight, you're nothing. A waste of space. I'd rather you let me put myself in danger than take away my freedom to do anything. Hey, you got me off on a tangent there. This is what I wanted to talk about. Hmm. What was I saying? I know that feeling. Big metal monster. Oh, right. Uh, I was thinking about how that great big monster of a machine must have taken a ton of iron ore to build. Put that together like with what Zumama was saying, and we know she definitely sent her people down to the mines to get that ore. Now that you mention it, I have heard something like that. Now I got no problem with that on its face, if she just had them digging around on the outside, no big deal. But now people are getting sick, and I have to do something. I don't care about her age of machines or whatever. If she's throwing away lives, she's earned a clobbering. You're a good doctor, Gaviel. Ah, <laughs> but of course. Gaviel. But Mimi, where is your mama's tribe? Um, I don't know. Uh, hey, Gaviel, I'm not really interested in your hopes and dreams and your dreams and ideals here. What's up with my brother? Huh? You can understand our Sargonian? Uh, yes, the leader taught all of us. What is that Zoomama up to? Whatever. Anyway, Tamimi, get your minions to carry this one back to your tribe. Have Lancet 2 start treating him. Hey, what are you doing? If you want your brother to live, you'll put your trust in me. Okay, then. I'll take him back with me. Huh. You're not coming with me? Uh, ah! N n no, I want... Of course I want to go with you, Gaviel, but I have a few things that need doing first. I'll catch up with you later. What things? Need my help? N no, I can take care of it myself. Gaviel, do you remember the Great Waterfall? We'll meet up there. Okay. All right. You're the one and only Gaviel. I trust you, but I'm not going with. No, you won't be any help. There's something I need you to do for me. What? Go tell Zumama we need to have a talk. Interesting to go back to the very bombastic music immediately after that. Sit. But yeah, we're getting a bit up there in the levels here. If this is anything like Leaves Chasing Fire, then we're probably going to have some troubles. Probably going to have some troubles. But we have learned a lot since then, so it probably won't be that bad. So yes, yeah, so it looks like we've got a fairly open map. The abundance of bush tiles makes me think we're going to be seeing more casters. And it looks like we don't have a lot of clear range tiles to start out with, so we're going to need to use a lot of temporary workers. Well, I suppose we might as well dive right in. Ah, though actually, we're going to see a cutscene before we do, aren't we? Doctor, we're pretty deep in the rainforest now. It's a lot more humid here, and the trees get way denser, too. Watch your footing. Don't trip. There's a tribe up ahead. Let's go take a look. <sighs> it's so boring here. I'm gonna take a nap. Enom. Gavion? 
I heard you fought Zumama at the festival and got uh, your tail handed to you. What are you doing here? Well, news sure gets to you fast, Enom. I gotta say, I thought Tamimi was pulling my leg when she said you're a tribal leader now, but here you are. It wasn't my decision. What can I do if they all want to follow me? So, why didn't you come to the ceremony? Doctor, this is e Enom, the girl Tamimi mentioned before. Hello. Whoa, a real live outsider. Hmm? Enom? How come you know Sargonian too? Well, officially, I'm the messenger for these parts around here. Messenger, huh? Catastrophe messenger, I assume. You... whatever. I, I can tell you at least know what a messenger is. Not like the boneheads here. Even if I told them, they wouldn't have any idea what it actually means. Wait up, when did you become a messenger? I've always been a messenger. We're still technically within Sargon territory. You can't possibly think they know absolutely nothing about this whole area. Huh. They don't, though. Of course not. As far as I know, a couple centuries ago, this actually used to be a Sargon mining colony. When the catastrophe happened, the whole nomadic city moved away, and they ended up abandoning the mine. The people who got left behind and the ones who came back later are our ancestors here. And I guess the higher-ups out there are thinking about repositioning those newer cities here to start putting the mine to use again. Like that time some ten years ago. You know the one. Oh, you mean that one time? Both Zumama and I saw it. That's also the day she started acting really strange. Oh, yeah? Well, I don't really know why they gave up on that idea. They probably had someone survey the area and realize the mine didn't have much value at all. If they did park the city here, it's going to end up pretty far away from all the other ones. I heard this stretch of no man's land used to be a pretty prosperous place. No idea how long ago, though. Well, whatever. Let's talk about something else. I mean, I was like, uh, how old was I again? Whatever. They sent me here after I became a messenger. Huh. <laughs> Sheesh. I don't get to talk about this very often. Can't you at least pretend to be a little interested? Nope, sounds like a pain. But if you're the messenger here, how come I haven't ever seen you around this, seen you leave this place? Of course you haven't. You know how shut off we are. I've been outside to shop, but no one's ever had anything for me to mail. Oh, okay. So, that would imply that she is, like, a messenger messenger. Just a person who delivers messages. So I suppose that is a duty that could overlap with being a catastrophe messenger. Now that I mention it, I don't remember if I've ever explained what a catastrophe messenger is. But yes, basically that is a person in universe whose job it is essentially to try to look for signs of approaching catastrophes and warn nearby settlements of them. But yes, anyway, we've talked about catastrophe messengers before. I think, yeah, we... I might have mentioned that Province is one of them, but I don't know that I mentioned what her job entailed. Anyway. From the day I became a messenger to this very day, you're the only person who still had contact with this place after you left. And since I've got absolutely nothing to do, I've been trading things I buy from nearby cities to make a quick buck. And before you know, I'm everybody's favorite shopkeeper, Enom. How about that? I never knew. With how you used to be, I'd, more I'd be more surprised if you did. But, well, even though I grew up in the city, I definitely prefer living here. It's simple and laid back. What's not to like? You don't really seem all that different from the other library here, either. I'll take that as a compliment. Anyway, what are you doing here? Let me ask you this first. What was AUS doing here? You didn't bring them here, did you? AUS? Of course not. Even someone like me, who hardly follows that kind of stuff, knows about them. I don't have that kind of pull. In fact, I was probably more surprised than anybody else when I saw them. They really were just passing by, and I was their interpreter while they were here. Oh, I could talk about them all day. You came at just the right time. I wasn't even sure how to brag about this when nobody here knows who they are. Check this out. I got this autographed album. 
Eh, I'll pass. I'm not a fan anyway. I just thought it was weird. <sighs> Gaviel, you've been out there so long, but your taste is just as terrible as ever. You want to get your butt whooped? Whatever. The doctor and I are on our way to Zoo Mama's, and we figured we'd stop and stop by and resupply here. Alright, we could just barter like everyone here does, but since you know how things work outside, you could pay me with cold, hard cash. Oh, wait up, I almost forgot. Uh, since you were bombarding me with all these questions, I was actually looking for you for something, too. Huh? You have a friend called Croissant? Croissant? Yeah, she's with us. We've been trying to find her. Have you seen her? You should take a look over in the bar pit. Come one, come all. Freshly carved wood sculptures right here. Check out these ores passed down from my grandfather. Forge weapons sharper than anything you've ever seen. What a lively place. <laughs> I was the one who taught them to pedal like that. It's something, isn't it? There's Croissant. In the corner of the market, Croissant is in a fierce standoff against a lone Arcosauria. Croissant gestures towards the ore her opponent is holding and then points to the seashell in her hand. He shakes his head. She frowns and waves her hand with a reluctant look. She takes a rock out of her pocket and points it at her seashell again. Then she points at the ore in his hand once more. He ponders for a moment and nods. Throughout the entire transaction, Croissant maintains a bitter expression, but the moment her trade partner turns around, her face immediately lights up with a bright smile. Ooh, That's quite an ore! What a prize! Croissant, what are you even doing bartering here? Gaviel! Boss! Finally! It took me ages to find y'all. Uh, you doing okay? Never been better. I came across her a few couple of days ago. I could tell she's not from around here, so I brought her with me. This girl really knows how to do business. She doesn't even speak their language, but she really knows how to speak the language of trade with my men here. I can see that. Prasant, have you come across anyone else? Nah, and I asked Phenom too, but she says she ain't heard nothing about that either. Alright, at least you're alive and well. Now we gotta find. Now we just gotta find Utage and Blaze. I'm not too worried about Blaze. She jumped out of the aircraft first. Didn't even think twice. As for Utage, uh, Enam, bad news. There's a group of Arcosoria charging towards us. What? Which tribe is it? Are they out of, are they out of their minds? Looks like the Great Wood Tribe, but they're being led by some freak with a sword. Ah, it's Utage. Also, I noticed the. Uh, Generic Arcosaurians that are part of Enom's tribe have a slightly different design, or at least I noticed this one has tattoos, whereas the other female Arcosauria that we've seen before didn't. Huh? A freak? Uh, what's that about? My man says a freak with a blade is charging towards us with a horde of Arcosauria. What gives? Hold up. A freak carrying a blade? Ah, uh, dag nabbit, it's gotta be Utage. Is she with you guys? In any case, it looks like they're here already. Gaviel and you, with the hood, uh, come help us. Oh, I'm coming with y'all. on, dudes, let's go. I mean, it's not like any of you know what I'm saying, but show them what you got. <laughs> oh, I wasn't sure about this at first, but it's kind of fun taking these guys around to fight. Hey, Utage, are you out of your mind? What are you even doing? Oh, it's Gaviel. Croissant and Doctor Two, hey as Who's hey uh who hang yeah? Why are you attacking the village and where'd you get these guys? Huh? Is this your hometown? Alright, I'll knock it off. Get these failures to knock it off too. Uh but you know, they don't understand a word I say. Looks like we're out of options. Let's take these idiots down. Very fun interaction. Alright. So, we got some fanatics. A fervent Tuatikau 
the cow combatant who thirsts for battle, deals fast attacks, and each one reduces the de uh, defense of the target. Alright, so... We're very open here, we're very exposed. It looks like the enemies are coming from the left-hand side first. That doesn't preclude them coming from the, you know, top and going over that way. I'm certain that will happen at some point. If the game's not too fussy, we could probably place Myrtle, say, here, facing this guy and deal some damage to him, or maybe even take him out before he has a chance to be a problem for us. But that might not be the ideal. I'm still not sure why I've not bothered yet to put in another Vanguard, considering that I almost always have two Vanguards, but, you know. Tip. I guess we've been doing okay so far, so it's not like I've really needed another Vanguard. But someone who can take hits a little bit better than Myrtle would probably be kind of nice. Okay, it's a good thing we chose that specific spot for Myrtle, especially because uh, it seems that, yeah, the other side is not going to be attacked just yet. So yeah, so I definitely want to have Attempt take that mushroom out pretty quick here. I think we want some healing. Oh, right, Myrtle can only block one. Um, so that was uh, a bit of a blunder on my part. Alright, Estelle's here, so now she should be able to, or rather, uh, Myrtle should be able to use her skill without issue. Oh, right, I forgot that these, uh, these tiles here were ranged tiles, so yeah, we don't have to worry about anyone coming from a different direction. Okay, so that makes me feel better. Hmm. So yeah, so I do kind of want to use Fire Whistle. I don't know that she's the best choice, but maybe I'll hold off a little bit. So yes, having another unit nearby her to deal some extra damage would be good, considering her relatively low damage output on her own. Myrtle's doing fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Asthesia, uh, I ended up putting in the wrong position because I wasn't 100% sure of what all was going on. And Asthesia is going to die here. So uh, let's let her not die. Oh, right, right, right. They're going Myrtle words. Ooh, that's bad, actually, <laughs> because I am uh, absolutely not prepared for that. So... All right, so we need some more damage because, yeah, Cora, for all of her various virtues, isn't that... Ooh. Oh, dear. Oh, wait, is... Wait, okay, hold on. <laughs> oh, dear, I wasn't paying much attention there, but, uh, yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> okay. Not enough damage, I guess. Because, yeah, uh, Fire Whistle folded like a, a wet napkin, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, we need more damage. We need these fellows defeated uh, yesterday. Mm, is Keiobe... I feel like Keiobe is kind of in a bad position, um, but we're all kind of in a bad position, so, uh, okay. Alright, so, what we learned there is that it seems that the brawlers, or whatever they were called, the defense-lowering fellows, uh, seem to be taking this lower path to go to the side here, which is what the map, you know, said they were going to take, but I didn't pay that much attention. So yes, the right-hand side then featured some of the shamans, which is a bit of a problem. Yeah, the thought I had for dealing with them last time was to use a, yeah, use a duelist defender, and I think that will probably still be pretty good, I think. 
Exactly yes. For dealing with the enemies that decrease defense, it could be good to use units who don't rely on defense very much anyway. But, uh, but yeah, for the southern enemies, I think we just need to kill them faster. Because, yeah, again, the issue is exactly what I thought. Aura can block a lot, and she can block more than other defenders, but she doesn't really have any damage. So once the enemies are there, you know, there's not much she can do about it. But yes, um... What else could we do? Of course, a part of the issue here is that our two arch damage dealers uh, are both pretty bad because they haven't been leveled up yet, which is, you know, an easy problem to fix, but I kind of want to see if I can keep going with, with them not being leveled. I guess it's as simple as not using them, which is not very interesting to be honest, but... I don't know. I enjoyed Kea Bay in the... I enjoy her as a character, and I've enjoyed seeing her skills a little bit. So I definitely wouldn't be opposed to leveling up Kea Bay and promoting her, potentially. And same with Tomimi, honestly. But yeah, I haven't gotten too familiar with her skills, and I don't know that her changing her damage into physical damage would be helpful for us here. Considering that, yeah, the issue we're having is that the enemies are bunching up when they get blocked, and when they are getting blocked, we need to eliminate them. And we, yeah, then they get more defense when they are being blocked. Of course, I don't know that they get so much defense that the damage bonus that Tamimi gets off of her talent wouldn't still be a plus, but... Because, yeah, 70% damage buff is nothing to sneeze at. Of course, her 277 attack, her level 1 attack, uh, is kind of something to sneeze at, because it feels a little bit like she's sneezing at you when she hits you, but, you know. So, yes. So, Keobe is a personal... a character that I would personally like to level up a little bit. The Mimi probably wouldn't go that wrong. But yes, we definitely could have done a lot better there in a lot of different places and a lot of different ways. Um, but yeah, again, I think the main thing was just not dealing enough damage. I just didn't deal enough damage and enemies got past us. But yeah, of course, I also had the issue that I didn't anticipate sort of when Myrtle would be necessary and where. So. But yeah, Estelle did great on her top side, as she pretty much always does. Um... The, the casters are a little bit of a worry, especially because she doesn't have a whole lot of defense, I don't think. I guess, I don't know that she doesn't have very much defense, actually. 258, which is not as much as, say, a defender, but I don't think it's bad. Yeah, it's less than Anesthesia, and Anesthesia does also have arch damage, so... Or she... Well, she does have arts damage, but that's not what I was meaning to talk about. But yes, anyway, she she also has um, the ability to increase her defense. So... Still does have more HP, I think. A pretty significant amount more. But that does give her a little bit more of a buffer against arts damage. Hmm... She's not going to be killing things that fast, though, up top, so she's not going to get her self-healing. But, of course, she doesn't necessarily need to rely on that either, so... So, yeah, I think, honestly, putting Asthesia in... in, uh, Aura's place would probably do us pretty well. The Brawlers could probably be dealt with pretty well by a unit that doesn't rely heavily on defense, such as Matoi Maru. But yes, Matoi Maru definitely has more attack than... maybe does, doesn't really have. Um, in fact, she definitely has less attack than... definitely has less attack than Fire Whistle, but she attacks more frequently, is the big bonus. I think she has more HP. Almost certainly, honestly, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, a thousand more HP. So yeah, losing her defense doesn't matter too much when we can already trade it all away for attack. Of course, if we want to, we could also play with Quartz once again. But yeah, again, I'm led to believe that Crushers are not very good, typically, so I'm a little bit reluctant to use Quartz. But, on the other hand, I like Quartz, so you know what? <laughs> you know what, I don't care, actually, to be honest. Um, so yeah, probably... I do like Matoy Mario too, but I am a contrarian by nature. But yes, um, Matoy or Quartz is slower than Matoy Maru, but she does have a decent amount, a, a lot more health actually. Wow. But yeah, um, she's a little bit more expensive to field. But I think she should be basically as good for the same for the role. I don't know that we want to use All Out Clash. I'd like to see it, to be honest, just because we haven't seen it yet. Hmm. Another unit that I've been thinking about recently is uh, Bee Hunter. Not necessarily for any tactical reason, but just because she has an English voice now, and I like her English dub. Her ability to, her inherent dodge, does also make the defense reduction somewhat of a moot point. Assuming that she gets those dodges off, anyway. Hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Well... You know what? No, we'll, we'll go with the Hunter. Might switch in Quartz later. Um... You know what? We'll switch in Quartz now. In place of Frostleaf. Hope I, can help. I hope so too. But yeah, I don't know that we'll necessarily need her, but we will have her around, and that'll be nice. But yeah, Bee Hunter could be good because she's fairly cheap. Um, yeah, the dodge doesn't affect arch damage, but the, the casters do a lot of physical damage when they uh, attack, so that could also be something to consider. Yeah, we could swing this a lot of different ways, I think. Let's just kind of go for it. Yeah, I don't believe we've used the specific type of guard that Bee Hunter is before. Alright, so let's start chopping. Don't want to waste any time. Give me the bell. But yes, so Bee Hunter gets additional attack from attacking. And she also has a passive skill currently. It's a little bit uncommon to see a passive skill on a unit, to be honest, but she does have one. But yes, so I think, yeah, Esthesia could do fine here. Um. She might do good up top, too, also. I guess it all depends on how much we really need where. Hmm. Honestly, I do kind of want to just use Gaviel unless I have specific reason to use another Operator. Who needs healing? Come over. Or another Medic, I should say. Hmm. Okay, we do have... Okay, I was going to say, we do have the issue that Bee Hunter doesn't do that that much damage. Hang in there, we might want another support unit up there sooner rather than later. But we're definitely going to want someone who can uh, kill things down here sooner rather than later, so, uh... Or, it's your up. I know I've, uh, more or less completely... More or less completely, uh... Oh, right, I was supposed to place her in the other spot where, you know, the enemies that reduce defense are, so that we can take advantage of the fact that she doesn't care about defense, because she doesn't have any. Um, hmm, how are we going to swing this? We might just need to, like, kill. Like, just try to kill this guy very fast. Hmm. Yes, Astesia... And not block you. I thought she could. Oh. 
Hmm. All right, so Kabe and the Hunter are doing a good job up top handling the enemies. Quartz should be able to block plenty. Yes, we don't need any more block out of Myrtle right now. One unfortunate thing, given that we have all of our melee units on the field already, is that, yeah, we can't... Um, I guess we don't necessarily have all of them on the field already. We could... Mm, I guess should have placed... Uh, could have placed her in a better position, but... Hmm. But yes, we don't strictly have all of our units on the field already. Ooh, this is bad, actually. Hold on. Um... Yeah, we need more blocking up top. So yeah, Bee Hunter, for her remarkable strength, is not, uh... Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. I don't like what's happening up top, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um... This might be a situation to deploy Korra, actually. Um... All right, so Quartz is doing okay. Come on, get it the misplacement on her, ooh. Oh, is, okay, Cora, no, Cora is not like outside of Gavial's healing range. We're just not, um, hmm, okay. This is just kind of bad. Oh dear. Cause yes, we don't have, hmm, <laughs> I think we're kind of crumbling on the bottom more so than anything. Quartz is not holding up. Ooh. Hmm. Okay. Okay, we've lost. Um, so that's not great. Um, oh no, we didn't lose. We might lose, uh, like, right away, but... We didn't lose when I thought we had lost. Okay. Anyway. So. Definitely did that pretty bad. I did it. Nah, maybe not bad. But I didn't do as good of a job as I could have. Not too bad, not too bad. I'm good for nothing. Just as expected. Not at all. Anyway, so. That was something to consider. So yeah. So again, we misplaced ports. So that's a little bit of an issue. E Hunter did okay, but she didn't like. We didn't put her in a position where she was good, per se. If we had placed her a little bit more forward and had a unit behind her to block, I think she would have been good, but yeah. The way things were, we sort of had to. Yeah, the way things were, we needed to stop a. Yeah, we didn't. B Hunter was in a bad position. Yeah, we couldn't make use of her defense, really, um, or her dodges from where she was. And she didn't quite have the damage, because, yeah, once enemies got up to her, you know, she didn't kill them quite fast enough to accommodate and make sure that no other enemies got through. Orch did fine. She killed things more efficiently than I was expecting, but she was out of range, out of healing range of... Yeah, she was out of healing range of Perfumer because I didn't think very much about my positioning of Perfumer. So she died a little bit faster than I was expecting. She did good where she was, but I think she would have been better better served, uh, you know, in the place that we planned to put her. So, we did also think about putting her up with the arch enemies. So her and Bee Hunter might be the strat next time. Honestly, mm, I don't know. It's a little bit tricky. I do think this team is fine, though. More range damage, maybe, but I think it's fine. All right, ladies, let's keep it cool. I, I won't let the bad guys win. Okay. Let's do this. So, now we need to consider what we're going to do vis-a-vis -vis medics. Again, I... If for no other reason than because this is the Gaviel event, I do kind of want to use Gaviel unless I have a specific reason to use someone else. Ooh, 
Yes, we do need some healing at some point, though. But yeah, if we position Perfumer like this, she can help a little bit, but she can't help that much. Something like this... Oops, nope. Something like this might be a little bit better. I won't be afraid. I am going to place Jessica down, though, because we need more violence to occur. Um, yeah, Keobe could also be good somewhere at some point. I'm being a little bit more cautious with mu which mushrooms I chop down, because I do want that defense bonus. Not a big problem, indeed. Yeah. Uh, I guess, yeah, we don't seem to have issues with melee units on the bottom tile. But we probably don't need, or bottom tile? On the bottom row. So we probably don't need to consider that too, too much. But yeah, with her slow attack speed, though, we do need to really kind of be careful with force. Because, yeah, she doesn't, yeah, she doesn't get negative defense. That's not a thing that we need to think about. Um, do we want to use... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Hmm. All right, so, force isn't, uh, isn't quite the beast that we needed. Hmm. Hmm. We might do fire whistle, like so, actually. So I'm seeing some of the criticisms of the <laughs> the crushers in action here. Um, Jessica's being quite useful. Um, Estelle is very strong and doesn't need to be babied too much. That's nice. Asthesia doesn't kill that fast. We might want to use, whoops, a temp and deploy, say, Keobe. Although, actually, you can't, uh, so maybe not. Um, maybe that's not something we need to think about. Well, actually, yeah, we don't need Myrtle much anymore, I don't think. So yeah, I feel like I'm a, maybe putting a little bit too much focus on the bottom. Because yeah, the top isn't doing that much better. Hmm. It's doing okay though. And I do think Bee Hunter's uh, acid is really kind of saving her bacon in a lot of places. Oh dear. Um... Okay, that's unfortunate. A bit late, not a big problem. Of course, yeah, she can only block one, so that is a benefit of hers, as we've established. It can be sometimes. Quartz is taking big hits. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't like what's going on up there. Yeah, again, I think I focused a little bit too much on the bottom row. Well, I say that, and then our bottom row collapses, um, and we... okay. So... We've got one hope, and that one hope is, is Myrtle. So... Can she make it? Yes, it looks like, actually. Never mind, we're good. Okay. Yeah, Bee Hunter might not have been the most efficient choice, but she did. She's doing pretty good. But yeah, the random dodges are not super reliable, but I do like the fact that she can dodge. Um, I don't want to retreat Myrtle um, at all if I can avoid it, but more specifically not now. Um, until I'm confident that, yeah, whatever is an issue will die. Hmm. Okay, Tamimi is very slightly out of range, so I picked a bad spot for her. But we did win.
That's it. Alright, so why'd you charge this place with those Arcosauria again? Well, I saw a village here, and I just thought it'd be fun to start a fight. Normal, normal student things. I guess that's our Archage. You're like a whole nother gal in a fight. Oh, I'm sorry. But how did you even manage to round up these guys without speaking their language? She speaks the language of violence, clearly. Honestly, I don't really know. My nails are ruined. So ticked off. Just where did my nail kit go? Now I'm twice as angry. And this is so gross and sweaty after the fight. Plus the air here is so humid, my clothes are totally soaked. Uh, now I'm three times as angry. And I'm just, and I'm like, just walking around. Why do these Arcosauria people keep coming up to me picking fights? Now I'm four times as upset. I only tagged along because I heard this would be a nice place for a vacation. This is totally not a vacation spot. Hmm? Is someone sneaking up on me? Are those Arcosauria? Then I beat up all the sneaky dudes. And then some more of them came, so I beat all of them up. And somehow they all started to, like, uh, worship me for some reason. Oh. I see. They probably thought you were some kind of exotic animal. After all, no one from around here looks like you. Huh? Are you blind? How do you mistake a cutie like me for an animal? Uh, well, to tell you the truth, you do kind of look like a freak to the, the Archosauria. Also, I spotted the Great Wood Tribe's leader among your people, so I asked him. Uh, apparently, you're their leader now. I'm what? Basically, you defeated the tribe's leader, and they're following you around because they look up to you as their leader now. Huh? They don't even understand a word I'm saying. I thought they were just tagging along for fun. That's what happens when you're strong enough here. What should I do, Doctor? Alright. Utage, congratulations on your promotion. Huh? <sighs> I don't wanna. Life without TV and AC? You might as well just kill me. Whatever. We found you in Croissant. Now we just gotta look for Brick Blaze. Uh, Blaze is probably fine. I can't imagine anything slowing her down. Me neither. Oh yeah, boss. What's the plan now? We going for the temple? Going to the temple for that ceremony Gaviel was talking about? Oh, right. You two haven't heard yet. Uh, Doctor, why don't you tell them? Uh, no more temple. Explain the situation to Utage and Croissant. Okay, I'll explain it properly. There's a big machine, and now no more temple. Uh-huh. Alrighty then. So, we gonna be looking for this Zoomama to get your engine back? That's right. Huh? You mean the ceremony's over already? Yep. And what did I even come here for? Whatever, it doesn't sound like something I'd care about anyway. Also, Gaviel, I thought you said this was a vacation spot. Huh? You don't think this place is great? Uh, well, actually, yeah. Yes, it's great. Uh, but like, nothing here screams vacation. What screams vacation to you? Like, beaches, oceans, parasols, and ice cream. I even got myself a new swimsuit. I've been wearing it underneath my outfit since we since before we left. And I just tagged along here because I got nothing else to do. <sighs> I never said there's anything like that around here. Didn't you say we were going to play in the water? Well, yeah, that we can do. There's a huge waterfall deep in the rainforest. And since we're heading to Zumama's tribe, we'll pass by the waterfall for sure. I even bought my, brought my swimsuit, too. I just haven't taken it out yet. Really? Awesome! Well, it looks like you found who you're looking for. Yeah, you know, thanks to you. No problem. Oh, I just remembered. Where's Tomimi? I thought she was supposed to be with you guys. No idea. 
I think she had something else to take care of. We'll group up with her later. All right, bring her these books then, will you? What do we have here? City beauty, mastering corporate management in 100 days, how to become a fashion expert. These are some weird titles. She's been learning Sargonian and what life in the outside world is like, after I taught her the basics, of course. Hmm, I can't imagine these books help much with her Sargonian. You're right, but that's really how she learned it. Letter by letter, word by word. It may not be the best material to learn from, but it was more painful to see her not having a clue where to start. That's also why I decided to teach her Sargonian. You know, Gabiel, she's working really hard to get where you are. You don't need to tell me. But, well, we don't know that much about what it's like outside either. Besides, I can only bring so many books with me. I don't really know whether she's learning anything useful for them. <laughs> no wonder there's always something weird about her. Hang on. Don't tell me you're the one who taught Zumama Sargonian too. Nope, I'm pretty curious about that myself. She did have me find her books on machinery, but it was like she just picked up Sargonian out of nowhere. And she's even teaching it to her tribe. Doctor, what do you think? Well, we could be caught up in the, in the marketplace, but I think we're going to pay attention to what's going on. She's quite ambitious. Maybe she has someone else working for her. Yeah, we did, actually. Yeah, the Enom did mention that the Sargonian government was sort of thinking about getting a foothold in this area. And Zumama has her interest in machines. So it does make some sense that they, yeah, if any tribe here, other than perhaps Enom's, would be sort of the person to go to. Yeah, would be the tribe to go to, led by the person to go to for the sake of establishing a sort of more modern foothold in the region. Umama would probably be the ideal ideal choice. You think so too, huh? Huh? Ain't nothing wrong with her teaching Sargonian. If people here could talk with folks out there, they'd live a lot better. Maybe. The way I think about it, compared to your supposedly much better lives, I think our way of life out here is satisfying enough. And I don't think you city folks would understand, though. That's so. Oh, I think I get it. I mean, I lived in the countryside back in Higashi, too. Eh, I took you for a city girl, what with how trendy you are. No, this is just the kind of stuff I like. <sighs> I'm tired. Time for a nap. Here at our tribe, anything we leaves out... Leave out for trade. If something catches your eye, hear trap. Hear Gabiel translate for you. Have trap Gabiel translate for you even. Wait. Hmm. I've got a favor to ask you too. Safe. Indeed, we are safe. We're very much uh, very close to not being safe there, but we did win. But yes. So, I think. Eh, hmm. I don't know. We're going to give it one more attempt. But yeah, we can definitely do that cleaner. So yeah, so again, the issue up top was just that there wasn't enough damage to go around. And the issue on bottom was that Quartz didn't have quite enough durability. Her having more defense probably wouldn't have helped that much, necessarily. Compared to, hmm, compared to Estelle, she does have significantly more damage. Hmm, I don't think this is necessarily the circumstance to bring out the calculator, but I do want to do some math. Or rather, I do want to, well, no. <laughs> I don't want to do math, per se, but I do want to look up some data. But yes, so Quartz has an attack interval, well, yes. Anyway, I'm comparing Quartz and Estelle's attack interval, basically. Yes. So, Quartz attacks once every 2.5 seconds, and Estelle attacks every 1.2 seconds. So yes, so Estelle having slightly more than double, or slightly more than half the attack, does mean that she will have double the uh, DPS. 
yeah, we could get a little bit more DPS out of Quartz if we leveled up her skills a little bit more, I think. I'm trying to remember, what is her talent? Okay, so her talent is more attack and more HP. I don't know if that will... I don't know if that's included in the numbers that we see here, necessarily. Hmm. I think... I think actually it's not, because I remember seeing a number on her that said 999 when I was had selected her in battle. So yeah, so I think that's the the the, the attack buff. Cuz yeah. All right, now I'm busting out the calculator. Yeah, 951 plus times yeah, 1.05. It might be some rounding in here somewhere. I can place my decimal in the right place. Okay. Yeah, so that is 999.55, so it's being rounded up. I figured it would be rounded somewhere, but, uh, but yes, anyway. Tip. So yes, so Quartz does have lower DPS and lower defense. She's got more HP, I think. But again, the HP is more valuable against the casters, I think. Yeah, again, I am I am definitely seeing the shortcomings of the humble uh the humble uh I just realized she actually does have a lot less uh her level's a lot lower too. If she were like Elite 160. I think yeah, I'm pretty sure Estelle would probably have more DPS. So yeah, 126, or 116, 26. Yeah, 112, 16, divided by 2.5, is 486.4 DPS. Whereas Estelle would have, yeah, 524, divided by 1.2. 524, 1.2. So yeah, so actually, yeah, Quartz does beat her out in, yeah, does beat her in terms of uh, DPS at the cost of not attacking as frequently. She also doesn't have the additional survivability of self-healing, but what she does have is she would have even more HP if we leveled her up some more. Yeah, she would have more than double the HP of Estelle. So I guess it's not really... I've been saying, you know, I'm seeing what people mean when they say that, that crushers aren't quite as good as other guards, or just aren't that good in general. We haven't really been giving giving Quartz a fair shake, though. Because, yeah, like... Yeah, she's underperforming compared to Estelle, but that's because she's Elite 1, level 1, and, elite, and Estelle's Elite 1, level 60. So... Yeah, Estelle's like the best she can be without being promoted again, and Quartz is the worst she can be without having not been promoted, so. Yeah, that's not super fair. Again, we've got another a lot of other units who could stand to be leveled up. Yeah. The yeah, the recommendation is fairly high at this point. And it's only gonna get higher. So it might be good to start leveling up units that we care to keep using. Hmm. I don't know. That might be something I think about later. I think we'll... I think we might wrap up for today. But yeah, because I, I would need to do some more considering. But yeah, we did pretty good. But yeah, I definitely, I definitely feel like we could have shuffled things around a little bit more to do that a little bit more effectively. Again, we do have, we did have on our team and use, which I wasn't initially expecting, we did use two, yeah, two units who are not just Elite 1, Level 1. They are just straight up Level 1. But yes, Kaobe and Tomimi were straight up the weakest they could possibly be, and... Yeah, so we just kind of didn't have range damage, which we really need, and more specifically, we didn't have arch damage. So, combine that with our other units not being quite up to snuff. 
yeah, having a lot of un really severely underperforming units mixed mix in with some low key kind of underperforming units probably didn't help our help our case there. We probably could have done that a little bit. We probably could have done that just been successful if we had uh, a little bit more force behind our our strikes, but. Again, I'm not necessarily opposed to leveling up units. I'm going to at some point, but I don't know. I don't want... I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, I always sort of say like, oh, I don't want to just solve problems with brute force, but, you know, at a certain point, the math just stops working for you if you just don't level up your units. Like, we could make this work. We did make this work, in fact. But... I don't know that I want to make it work. I think I just want to play the game and enjoy it and have fun. Um, it is fun. Well, yeah, that's not fair of me to say. It is fun for me to solve this, to solve these problems. But I do want to be... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. Anyway, so... If anyone has any raid suggestions, please feel free to drop one. If not, I can find a raid target on my own. And in the meantime, we will go over the schedule. So, today has been Arc Nights. Yes, currently we are planning on Saturday being the collab day with Sheppy Sheps. Yeah, at least in this case, I don't think... At the very least, we didn't discuss the potential of it being different going forward, but... This stream, at the very least, this Saturday stream, will be a collab stream. Or rather, this collab stream will be on Saturday. Got my things mixed up a little bit there. But yes, not currently planning on other streams throughout the week. I definitely have some additional business I need to take care of tomorrow. That, uh, yeah, my schedule currently precludes me from streaming on Saturday. Yeah, Friday is a possibility, but I don't have any plans to do so. Yeah, normally the... Yeah, normally instead of streaming on Saturday, I'd be streaming on Friday. But yeah, anyway, as for that Friday collab stream, Coffee Talk with Chevy Sheps, we will be playing sometime after 8 p.m. Central Time, most likely, though we haven't quite nailed down the details of what we're going to do precisely when. And I think that just about covers us. So, I'm not seeing any raid suggestions, so I do believe we're going to go and drop by Asa Chibi today. Asa Chibi VT. Alright, doing a just chatting stream, it looks like. Alright. Not a whole lot to be said. Asa Chibi VT. Did I spell that right? Yes, I did. Okay. So, the customary, whoops, the customary raid message is, as always, we have arrived. Oops. There we go. And so, thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you have had a fine night. I hope that you will continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you'll be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much, and farewell. Let us get this raid underway.